You'd think that as an international student, I'd be used to packing by now, but nope, still very painful. Um, this is me packing in Berkeley, where I'm currently a third year studying electrical engineering and computer. Okay, this is Bryce. Things may seem all nice and dandy in these clips, but be not fooled. We are currently amid the COVID-19, aka coronavirus pandemic that has caused 21,000 plus deaths and continues to grow. So this is me trying to get out of there as fast as I can. And I decided to vlog this because this is a pretty unique experience that I wanted to remember and I have a really bad memory. Like, when am I going to pack masks ever again? Fun fact, I carry a tennis ball wherever I go. Because why not? It's portable, it's fun. Boom. Kobe. R.I.P. This video ended up being longer than I intended because I found myself wanting to document not just the process of going back, but also how I felt, what I did right before. And for example, this is me talking to someone who went back, shout out to Austin, to ease my anxiety about the whole quarantine process, which is that as someone who came back from the US, I would have to be quarantined in China for at least 14 days. Thanks. And this is another one of those things that I wanted to document, which is just Bryce and I spending some time together before I leave. Yeah, corn. He's just kind of like, what are you doing? Yeah. Yes, I eat pickles straight. Fight me. Welcome to my video. Vlog video. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. We have different humors. This is us leaving. He stuck a stamp on my backpack because he was mailing me away. Bye, little astronaut. Around this time was when I got a text from China Airlines saying that all flights through Taiwan were going to be canceled because the Taiwan government said so. Vroom vroom, I'm in me mom's car. But I was like, eh, too late to turn back. Turned out to be the right call though, because even though all flights on the 24th were being cancelled, because I took off before then, I was fine. Not having to do this myself is so great, wow. I joked there, but honestly, as an only child and someone who moved a lot, it really was weird having someone else move my luggage for me. But it was really nice, so thanks Bryce. Oh, who is he? The international terminal at SFO was really empty, like eerily, apocalyptically empty. And I told Bryce to film me, <laughs> and this is what he did. Different humors. So good to go? I mean, I think I'm just gonna fly and see where it goes. I also got a vegan meal to make my mom happy. Hmm. You also get food earlier. Pro hack, traveling hack. If you get a special meal, your food comes earlier. Let me introduce a product. My roommate Grace Lynn left this for me. Well, she didn't actually leave it for me. She left it, and then it was like, oh, I forgot it. You can have it. It's just some disinfectant stuff. Look at this envelope. Oh, nice, dude. Hmm. Hello, sir. Hi. How do you feel? Mm, the S word. This is bullshit. <laughs> it's nice to know Michelle will be safer in China. I'm really happy she's actually leaving this country because. Pretty sure it's really dangerous here. We're running out of hospital beds. China's doing fine, so. Yeah. Dab on the haters. Dab on the haters. Uh, <laughs> oh shit. Didn't need that. Another news. While Michelle is gone, I'm gonna practice beatboxing. <laughs> oh yeah. shit! We'll get that going while she's gone. I'm gonna eat all her food. <laughs> <laughs> and then we said goodbye, and this is a video he sent me, and I walked around the airport. And I wanted to film the people around me, um, so <laughs> this is my way of doing that. People were suited up, as you can see. White suits, yellow suits, glasses, masks, everything. And got my temperature checked before I boarded. And everyone was required to wear a mask throughout the duration of the flight, except for eating. And a lot of people actually chose not to eat, just so they didn't have to take off the mask. But besides that, the flight was pretty normal, um, except for when we landed, we had to wait, like, I would say an hour. Um, some people were being called off individually. And at some point, I got really bored. Now the transferring experience was pretty different. Rather than just have to walk to another gate, I had to wait in really long lines and get security checked again. 
but the lines moved pretty fast. They seemed to know what they were doing. And within an hour, I was next to my gate waiting for my flight. This is Bryce's homie, Tommy. <coughs> He's single, <coughs> ladies. I decided to film me changing my SIM card because I think that's not something people usually think of, but it is one of those common international student things. I got on my next flight from Taiwan to Shanghai and the kid in front of me was on Zoom. I thought that was pretty funny. Now, the moment we got off the plane in Shanghai, this is where the exciting stuff started to happen. The whole way through, there were people in fully full white suits escorting us and me filming things that I probably wasn't supposed to film. And in addition to the regular entry form that you had to fill out, you also had to fill out a health form and get interviewed. In the past 14 days. Okay. Come on. Are you yeah. sick? Yeah. Cool. I got my form signed and then scanned and then I was on my way off to luggage claim and I was like, no way, am I done? Ha! There's still 10 more minutes in this video, of course I'm not done. Usually after you get your luggage at this airport, you have nothing to declare, you walk through, you see the light, boom, you go home. But instead, the route that you would usually take to go to the parking lot was converted into this segmented area that was divided by district and my district was at the end. So I walked all the way to the end where I was met with yeah. some kind health workers and more paperwork. They asked me for the same information that I had to put on the first health form. And I think what was happening here is I officially ended the airport specific health check and was entering my district specific procedure for quarantine. They told me to wait and so I did and I got hungry. I'd say I was sitting there for about one to two hours, but then they finally said, the bus is here, we're gonna go. I didn't know where we were going, but I just followed. We went outside, there was about seven of us in this cohort, got on the bus, partied in the back and had a cop car follow us. At this point, we were officially leaving the airport and arrived somewhere in my district. And this turned out to be the testing center, my final stop. They gave us a bag of food, they gave us a room and more waiting. So I vlogged. So we, uh... So I just got my test done. Wow. I feel I'm still crying. It basically feels like you're drowning. Um, they stick like a thin tube thing up your both your nostrils one at a time. But it was very quick. It was like minute tops. Um, and then they said, now you have to wait here for eight to ten hours. <laughs> cool. It's currently 7 p.m. I'm in this. Definitely not a hotel. I think this is like a... I wanna say asylum, but I feel like that's not right. But there's... Okay, so... It, okay, what's here? What's weird is that there's aircon, a TV built in, and then there's a bathroom. So the fact that there's aircon built in and a bathroom means this is meant to keep people. But there's like... No furniture. Like, look at that. And like the walls are all painted white and like not really pretty so i don't think it's a hotel and that is why my money is on asylum they give us this like bag of food two bottles of water and f like four different pastries and then the highlight is the kang shu fu hong shao nyo rou mian which i have not had like in forever definitely not in my time in berkeley in my three years in berkeley and i don't remember the last time i ate it when i was in china so i'm very excited for this I landed at 10 a.m. and I have been, and I just got here. So since landing, I went through all like the red tape at the airport. Um, it went pretty smoothly though, even though I had to write my address and my name and like my cell phone number and my flight number like five different times. Uh, what was really cool is that there were digitized systems as well. And that meant that they had us scan a QR code and then in it, it would ask us to fill out like all this information that we already filled out in a physical form. And then in the end, it would give you a QR code that you will then screenshot and keep. Before I got on the bus, you just scan that QR code as like um, evidence that you, like, you're ready to go and like to tag yourself. It's kind of like um, Caltrain, where you tag in and tag off your, your Caltrain ticket. Um, it's like that, except you can generate your own QR code and it's a QR code. So that was pretty cool. <coughs> Anyways, this is what I 
This is as good as I remembered it. I went light on the sodium, but you know what? Fuck. I deserve sodium. Update on how I feel. <clears throat> I feel pretty good. I don't think I ran into any difficulty besides just having to wait for a really long time. Um, but it was a really good test in patience. And I think I did pretty well. Just sat there, you know, entertained myself. So overall, I'm, I'm proud of how I did in this process and being patient and understanding. And I'm in the final stages of this whole quarantining process. Isn't it bizarre that I'm in Shanghai? Like, I think that hasn't hit me yet because coming back was a pretty spontaneous decision. I was actually in Tahoe at the time that I bought tickets. There was a lot of uncertainty in Bay Area, like shut down two days before. I did not expect to be here at this time. In fact, I expected to be in Tahoe at this time. It is spring break right now. But alas, I'm in Shanghai. Did you miss this high quality audio? Because I sure did. So yeah, I sent copy pasted update messages to some important people and got out of there. Now here's where I was kind of shooketh. Um, it was 3 a.m. right? But they had a minivan just for me and sent me home, which was 40 minutes away. And throughout this whole process, everyone was really nice. Hey. Hey, ma. There were two health workers in the car with me and the one that was riding shotgun followed me up and we did, <laughs> you guessed it, more paperwork. He took my temperature again and we signed some papers and of course a cameo from Bryce. Different humors. And when Mother Mao shut that door, I considered that the end of my travel and the beginning of my quarantine process. Now that's the same humor that I have. And that's it. Um, the last three minutes or so is just me vlogging and my thoughts before bed. So feel free to watch, but that was it. It is 4 a.m. I made it back. And yeah, it's the quarantine stuff is actually being taken pretty seriously. I was wondering how they were going to enforce me not leaving conveying the right tone which actually reminds me a lot about like speaking tips usually or like leadership strats uh which is that as an authority figure you set the tone and followers will tend to follow if you have at least a little bit of credibility and i find that really interesting because like i try to carry that out in a team setting too like if i want the team to be like goofy then i will like unleash a goofy side of me or if i want us to be serious then i will be more serious and I think it's the same situation here. Like, you don't have to explicitly say like, we're taking this really seriously. Um, if you leave, these are the consequences, blah, 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 blah. Like none of that. There was no fear tactic. It was mainly just the social workers themselves taking themselves very seriously, being like, we're gonna sign some paperwork and these are the conditions and you just need to sign here. As well as my neighborhood, which is a really new neighborhood. So I'm surprised that they were able to keep up with the system as well. Like this building didn't finish until like three years ago. When we drove in at 3 a.m., there were like two guards who followed us in. There was a car that followed us as well. I don't know if that was someone else or something. But the compound is going to be registering people and keeping track. So it does seem like it's a very much a divide and conquer approach. like Similar to the district dividing at the airport. Now within districts, it's like compound dividing. And maybe it's because I, I live in a more um, like a wealthier compound that things are so put together. I, I am curious to see how a more like old-fashioned old compound is running and whether they're taking it seriously with like the population being so old usually at, in these compounds. They in fact are the ones who should be taking it the most seriously. But I'm home now. Um, 4 a.m. I don't know. I'm gonna try to sleep. I'm not tired at all. But yeah, overall, very fun experience. Like wow. There was a man in fully white masked gear who walked into my house and <laughs> signed quarantine papers with my mom. Like, I do fully plan to stay for quarantine for the next 14 days. Let's see if I'll go slowly insane.